train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. About 12 miles west of York stands Railgate Prison, wherein those non-faceless vehicles who have committed a crime are incarcerated, or shunted to use the correct term. I've talked about the vehicle criminal justice system in Great Britain on a previous occasion, mentioning how 30 days is the maximum sentence we can receive, but there were a few points I didn't mention. For starters, not every vehicle who commits a crime is sent to Railgate. Depending on the severity of the offence and the circumstances surrounding it, a non-faceless vehicle can be shunted in their local community. Wendell, for instance, was shunted for 15 days on the Great Western Branch Line he worked on, and Donald was given 7 days at Brendam for bumping Dominic that one time. Then you have the occasions like when Diesel threw Colleen into the back of Percy, and when Jeffrey sabotaged our trains. For their crimes, they got 15 and 30 days at Railgate, respectively. Being a Nor'easter, I am of course biased against the Middies, and would naturally highlight every instance where they got into trouble with the law. But as you've seen for yourself, we've also had our own run-ins. One such incident, however, is more well known than the others, and I'm going to be talking about that today. But before I go any further, I have to again mention my story about the boulder. As I said, its destruction caused all manner of problems on Sodor. With passenger services severely disrupted, more buses began arriving on the island to compensate, and unfortunately, even after the main line was repaired, more than a few of our passengers didn't come back, preferring the convenience and affordability offered by the newly formed Sodor Bus Company. Among its fleet was a young chap named Bertie. He ran the service between Napford and Farquhar efficiently and reliably. Unfortunately, he drove those of us who worked on the branch around the bend by bragging about it, he especially got on Thomas's nerves. So once again, the buses of Sodor have been a big help to you steamies, eh? Don't let it go to your radiator, Bertie. It only took a week for them to fix the canal. A week's a long time these days, Thomas. <laughs> it's amazing with you lot. One little fault with your precious rails and you come unstuck. An entire section of track being washed away by rain is more than a little fault. But you can be sure, if something like that had happened on the roads, we'd just find a way to go around. You engines really are hamstrung when you think about it. Well, I'm not thinking about it. I'll choose rails over roads every day. It's your loss, mate. Your roads aren't better, you know. They cause friction. Our rails don't. So we can go faster than any of you? <laughs> yeah, sure. And I'm the Emperor of Persia. Just you wait and see. I'll show you how fast an engine can go. Provide your rails don't get washed away again. Ha 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 ha! He boils me up so much, I could probably run without a fire. I'd like to show him. Me too. Me three. <sighs> One of these days, lads, it'll happen. One of these days.
So we're agreed? Only if Thomas consents. You could always tell him to go along with it, being station master and all. I could, but I'd rather give him the choice. All right, I respect that. Hey, Thomas, you got a moment? What do you want, Bertie? I'm taking a trainload of hikers up to Farquhar. I know. Knappard Station Master told me. Willie? What are you doing here? Thomas, have you met David Hansen, owner of the Sodor Bus Company? Can't say I have. Good morning, Mr. Hansen. Good morning, Thomas. Nice to finally meet you. So, what's going on? Well, David here just so happens to be my cousin. We were talking last night and were wondering who would win between one of his buses and one of our engines. And Bertie told me about your conversation at Balahu yesterday, and we decided, why not find out? What are you suggesting? A race. First one up to Farquhar wins. How much have you got riding on it, Willie? Ten pounds? I'll take that. Me too. So what do you say, Thomas? I say, let's go. Excellent. Are you ready? On your marks? Get set! <whistles> Try and keep up, mate! Funny! I was going to say the same thing to you! Oh, bother! Why didn't I take the bridge? Not a smart move, Bertie! Ha ha ha! Just you wait, Thomas. I'll catch up. Thomas, why'd you come in so fast? Never mind that. What's with the signal? I'm leaving soon. So get going. I said soon. How soon is that? Two minutes. Bother! I was going so well too. With what? See you at the top, Thomas. What's he mean? I'm racing him. The winner is whoever reaches Farquhar first. Oh, how were you going? I was ahead, but now... Thomas, go. Really? Yeah, just go. You sure? If he wins, we won't hear the end of it. Go for it. Cheers, Eric. Good luck. Don't count me out yet, Bertie. What the? What's his hurry?
Yes, I won! And a fine victory it is too. Well done, Thomas. You're not angry? Of course not. You won fair and square. And I must apologize. What for? For being arrogant enough to not only think I could beat you, but that you wouldn't provide a challenge. You proved me wrong on both points. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks Bertie. That means a lot. And great job from you too. You really made me work for this. So did that last hill. From that point on, I knew the only way I was going to beat you was to grow wings and become an aeroplane. <laughs> nah, the wings wouldn't suit you. You look better with wheels. I certainly do. So? I won. Great job! I wish I could have been there to see his face. You would have been surprised. He took it extremely well and even congratulated me. Huh, that is a surprise. It gets even better. We got to talking after that and he's a real good bloke. He said he'd be happy to call me a friend and to race me again. I said the same thing to him. Tell me I didn't just hear that. Oh no. I did mishear that, right Thomas? I didn't just hear you say you engaged in a race with Bertie the bus? Um, uh... Oh, bus my buffers. What's the big deal? No one got hurt. I showed the Sonor bus company what we can do and made a friend in the process. You're not entitled to be lucky when it comes to law breaking. What do you mean law breaking? Speeding. Thomas, I saw you fly out of Ellsbridge. That's bad enough, but speeding while pulling a passenger train? Have you forgotten what happened to Arthur when he did that? Bust my boiler! You're right! Uh, I can't believe I did something so stupid. Me neither. <sighs> Mr. Star is going to be furious when he finds out. When's he get back from London? A few days. He'll be mad at me too. Why? Because I let Thomas leave before me so he could catch up to Bertie. You did what? You encouraged him? Yeah. And how did Jeffries react to that? He was off sick today. I see. All right, now I have to wonder why your crew didn't keep you in check, Thomas. Um, they had a bet going with Willie about who'd win the race. You mean Station Master Willie Hansen? Knapford's Station Master? Yeah, his cousin owns the Sodor Bus Company. Was anyone else complicit? The Fat Controller, maybe? Edward, settle down, will ya? You're getting worked up over nothing. This is not nothing, Thomas. This is serious. With so many people who know about this, it'd be a miracle if the police don't find out. And it was seemingly a miracle. Two days went by and nothing about Thomas and Bertie's ill-conceived race became public. However, Mr. Starr would find out. The day he returned from London, Following an important meeting he and Mr. Zorro had had with the railway board, Thomas and Eric told him what they had done. Our director was understandably and expectedly angry. He promptly took them off passenger duties and stuck them with goods and shunting work. But not before ordering them and myself to stay quiet, as such a stupid action was bound to cause controversy for the LNER. Furthermore, he also reprimanded those railwaymen who were involved. Another two days went by and the details of the race continued to remain a mystery. I sometimes wonder 
if we should have borrowed the lucky lamp from the Mid-Sodor Railway. Maybe then, our luck on the matter wouldn't have run out. How was your holiday, Pat? Lovely. Not nearly long enough, but they never are. Anything exciting happen while I was gone? Only if you count the race between Bertie and Thomas. Ay, Dios mio. Do not get him started, Patrick. Why don't you believe it, Carlos? I highly doubt Thomas would be so reckless with a passenger train. The way I hear it, there was money riding on it. What good is that to an engine? Excuse me, does someone want to tell me what's going on? Thomas and Bertie? Racing? Are you sure? That's what he said. The rumor's been floating around for nearly a week. Do you think it's possible? Thomas has done brash things before. But this? We'll have to investigate, Mickey. I know, Pat. I'm really hoping it's not true. Are you serious, Bertie? No word of a lie, Thomas. It's a real thing. What's it called again? The Drunk Armator. And it can tell when a person's drunk? How? I don't know the details, but they're trying out this gizmo in America to catch drunk drivers. And I hope they roll them out here, too. The amount of times I've almost been ridden off the road by a drunk is ridiculous. Yes, because drunkenness is the only cause of accidents on the roads. It's never negligence or stupidity. What do you mean, Chief? Is something wrong, Mickey? That depends. Did you two really race one another up to Farquhar last week? I don't believe it. Chief, it was my fault. I goaded Thomas into it. But I went along with it. You're both to blame, so don't bother falling on your swords. <sighs> this is a very serious matter. I have to inform the police. We know. I don't know you well enough, Bertie. But Thomas, I expected better from you. I'm very disappointed. Me too. Joey promptly took Thomas and Bertie into custody, and a magistrate from the Ministry of Transportation was summoned. He sentenced them both to 10 days in Railgate on a number of charges, ranging from criminal endangerment to speeding. And I'm sorry to say, the fallout from this was very severe. A larger investigation was opened that saw Mr. Starr reprimanded by the railway board for failing to report this to the police. Thomas's driver and fireman were suspended, as was Knapford's station master, Willie Hansen. The Sodor Bus Company had to pay a substantial fine and was almost put out of business. And finally, Eric was shunted in the sheds for two days. Every step of this investigation appeared in the papers, the coverage shattering our public image. Needless to say, the middies delighted in this and didn't hold back in pouring salt into our wounds. You must be heartbroken that Thomas got done in, Kate. You can't talk, Diesel. You've been to Railgate too. I'm not there now. Give it time. I'm sure that'll change. Blow it out your smoke box. That's how we talk, mate. <sighs> you got me pick up ready or not? No, I don't. I have to organise this lot first. Then shake a wheel. I gotta get back to Brendam. I need to collect some more trucks. But if you'd get them for me, that'd be great. Why would I do you a favour? They're just a little stiff and hard for me to move. But if you don't think you can handle them, you reckon I can't? Where are they? Over there, under the shed. The empty ones, obviously. No worries. I'll move them. Just you watch. Um, Kate? Aren't those the trucks with the faulty brakes and rusty frames? 
the ones that are marked to be scrapped? I don't know, Alex. I can't remember. Blimey, this lot is stiff. I did warn you, Diesel. Do you need a hand? No, I got this. Just watch. Come on, move it. Come on. Maybe you should take it easy, Diesel. Rubbish. I got... Well, I wasn't expecting that, but I'll still take it. You'll take what? You knew there was something wrong with these trucks? So did you. I did say they were a little stiff. Did she also tell you they weren't to be moved because they're going to be scrapped? No, she didn't. You have an explanation for this, Kate? Any particular reason why you didn't tell Diesel those trucks were under quarantine? That I clearly told you not to let any engine other than myself touch them under any circumstances? No, Chief. Then why let him touch them at all? It was just petty payback, sir. Payback. And that's worth putting an engine and their crew at risk. I'm sorry, Chief. Not as sorry as you're going to be when Joey gets here. Ha ha. You're for it now. Belt up, Diesel. Yes, Chief. Kate? What are you doing here? Pipe down, number one. Yes, ma'am. Phew. She was pleasant. Believe it or not, she's one of the good ones. You're joking. I wish. What are you doing here? Oh, I played a prank on Diesel and it backfired. The courts gave me six days. What did you do? It doesn't matter. It wasn't worth it. I know the feeling. Me too. Is that you, Bertie? Yeah, it's me. Nice to see you, Kate. In a matter of speaking. Likewise. So... What's it like around here? Boring. All we do is stand around and wait for the days to end. And with all this inactivity, I'm worried what'll happen when they try and move us. I hadn't thought about that. This is going to be miserable. But at least I'm in good company. Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks. And Kate, you look lovely today. Oh... You're sweet, Thomas. Why, Thomas, you old dog. I'm pleased to say that something good would come of this whole experience. And I mean that in more ways than one. This would be the only time the trio would be on the wrong side of the law. After that, they and the rest of us played it straight. Things gradually returned to normal for the Nor'easters with our suspended staff returning alongside our passengers. A new level of harmony was achieved with the Sodor Bus Company, who worked in tandem with us to provide an efficient travelling experience. But I'm sorry to say that a mild level of resentment did remain among us engines for a while. Thankfully, it too cleared up with time. And a good thing too, given the operation that was about to follow. But that is a story for another day.